Hey, Kevin Yates here, and uh, if you haven't already uh, been able to tell, I'm uh, done for the day at home, uh, which is why I'm wearing the uh, relaxed wardrobe today. But I did want to take a minute and um, talk a little bit about uh, if you have clients who have knee pain and what to do about when they feel knee pain doing exercises like squats and lunges. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about um, lunging. And, and knee pain um, and try to give you some strategies you can use to help identify what the true nature of the knee pain and, and really what's going on is and then some strategies about what you can do about it to help um, correct it. So if you've been following my blog posts and my videos, obviously um, you know that I'm a big, big believer in the fact that um, most exercises are not bad for anybody, uh, but the, the lack of physical conditioning to perform those, those exercises and those movements safely and effectively, that's the real problem. In the majority of cases with squatting and lunging, the same thing's happening. It's not, the exercises aren't really the, the main cause of, of the pain. If there's low back pain, hip pain, knee pain, foot and ankle, whatever the case may be, the majority of the time it's improper or inefficient muscular recruitment patterns that are going on, plain and simple, okay? So, um, you know, and rather than, you know, it's easy to just say, okay, well, if you, you know, I feel a little bit of pain in the knee, okay, don't, don't, do, don't do that, Mrs. Jones, don't do that lunge anymore, let's just get rid of that, let's go in a nice, comfortable machine, let's sit down, let's do some leg extensions, leg presses, things like that, but to be honest with you, it, it's, it's crappy that way. I mean, it, it, it doesn't do your client any real benefit long term. And I'll tell you why. Because outside of the gym, what, you know, Mrs. Jones, a mother of three who spends her day taking care of the kids and, and taking care of the house, who's got to, um, you know, do a lot of housework, who has to go up and down stairs maybe, who's bending down, picking up laundry baskets, um, groceries, unloading out of, in and out of the car, who's having to chase after the kids, who's getting in and out of the car, things like that. That's a lot of single leg dominant work. And if we're not addressing the, the cause of what's going on that's causing you know, a client like that pain, then we're doing them a big disservice because just avoiding it isn't going to correct anything. And, and every time she goes back into doing those movements, she's going to be subjected to the same type of stress, the, the improper movements that, that put her in pain. So the best thing that we can do is really key in and identify exactly what's going on so we can get a better picture of, of identifying what kind of imbalances and compensation strategies exist and then what to do to correct them. So when we're looking at a lunge in particular, um, I'm going to back up here and try and get in the camera. and. Uh, you know, a couple things to look for. One, there, there's very subtle things. You know, a lot of times we think uh, that if we, if somebody's not like visually, if we can't see that they're on their toes and their heels lifting off the ground, that they're doing the exercise properly. But I'll tell you that in the majority of cases, that that doesn't happen. They they appear to be doing it right, but really the muscles that they're recruiting are off. They're still compensating, and I'll show you. So if I go into a lunge, and I'm doing a right leg lunge here. All right, if I come down into that lunge, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down into this lunge and my heel's on the ground, okay? And I, I appear to be doing this lunge correctly, but really what's happening right now is I'm putting a lot of pressure on my toes and on the ball of my foot, and I'm, I'm feeling a lot like happening around my knee, okay? Now, interestingly enough, I mean, it, it would appear that I'm doing things right, but really, if you look really closely what you'll see, watch my hip and watch my knee, and that's what you're looking for is what, what happens when they initiate, because a lot of times when people get knee pain, their, their knee, really even just looking at the knee, is moving forward. It might not be a lot, but it's moving forward. So if you watch it, you see that? You see that knee moving forward? That's what's happening, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that knee's not moving forward, that it's staying put, and they're getting a good bend at the knee and the hip, so instead of it moving forward this way, they come down this way. Now there's a catch to that too, because a lot of times when you cue a client to do that, they'll end up putting all their weight on the back leg. 
and then they'll, they'll, they might complain of knee pain, um, but it'd be in the other leg, on the back leg. So, you know, that's another big thing you want to be asking them is, if they say, hey, I have knee pain, my knee hurts when I do that, which knee is it? Because if it's the back knee, I mean, that's really an easy fix. They're just not loading the front leg, they're compensating with the back leg, right? So those are a couple things that you can do. Now, I cover a lot more of assessments like these, and, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, these assessments like this are very, very important. And the problem that I have with a lot of the personal training certifications out there um, and fitness courses that are being taught is that things like this aren't being taught. And, you know, some of the courses out there that are teaching things like this are just way too scientific. Um, you know, there's, there's, mumbo jumbo and terminology that's being thrown around that you know I know in 2000 when I was just you know getting into personal training I took courses like this and read books I mean I, it felt like I was reading a foreign language I was like you know what is this what does this mean I'm not a doctor you know I'm a personal trainer I just want to help my clients you know so things like this don't have to be overly scientific um, you know there doesn't have to be hundreds of micro assessments on you know, things really deep and digestive system stuff and stress and all this stuff. I mean, that's cool stuff to know. I mean, and if, if that's what, you know, you like to know that stuff and everything, I mean, that's great, that, that's okay. But there's far too much stuff that's going way beyond the scope of what we as personal trainers really need to effectively help our clients overcome things like nagging injuries and muscle compensations and correcting muscle imbalances. So what I've done is I, I've been sending some emails to you about uh, this, this muscle imbalance webinar, okay? And it's by next week, um, keep your eye on your inbox because I'm gonna send you an email on how to get access to this webinar. And in the webinar, um, I, I've put together a whole presentation on how to identify uh, and correct muscle imbalances of the lower body. So I talk a lot about the common injuries that happen, um, the, the compensation patterns that are leading to them. I go through specific assessments that are easy to understand on how you can identify the, the imbalances and then some corrective strategies and exercises you can use like right on the spot to correct them. Okay, so if, if um, you're interested in that, definitely keep an eye on your inbox and I'm going to tell you next week how you can get access to that and that's also there's going to be five other presenters in this webinar who are all experts in muscle imbalance training so if you have clients who are suffering from nagging injuries um, who are stuck in a fitness plateau and, and can't move forward or, or they're having trouble recovering or things like that then you'll definitely want to check out this webinar Okay, so what I'd love to know is your feedback, all right? Um, what did you think about if the strategies that I presented? Have they helped you in any way? And maybe what strategies you've used on your clients that I didn't get to talk about today that have worked really well? I'd love you to share those with me and with all the readers on this blog and just leave your comments below and, uh, and let me know, all right? Until next time, this is Kevin Yates. Take care and have a great day.